right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about auto-implemented properties. Um, you might have gotten a sense from when I was showing off how to create properties that some of those properties might get a little bit repetitive to write, especially if you have to write a lot of them. A lot of the times in the get part of the property, you'll just have to return something. And a lot of times in the set part of the property, you'll just have to set a variable to a value. Um, so Visual Basic luckily provides us some tools that helps actually reduce the amount of work that we have to do with that. So it's super helpful. I wanted to uh, talk about all of that for that reason, just to help reduce how much typing you have to do. So uh, in the apply section, we're talking about 10.1 and 10.2. All right, so I wanted to show off some example code right here. Um, what we have are, you know, we have this course grade class for a particular course that, you know, it works as long as the course has two assignments that are scored whatsoever. But there are two score member variables and one grade member variable. The scores are, you know, some points score, and the grade is a string that would contain a letter grade. Now there are properties associated with this. Uh, these properties are pretty much the same, except for, you know, the difference between score one and score two right here, you know, the names. But otherwise they are exactly the same and very standard. These are practically a template for the most basic type of property right here, aren't they? Uh, where the get just returns the value of the variable and the set just sets the variable, you know, it gives a value to the variable. You might as well just be working with the variable itself. Uh, same thing for score two right here. But the difference with grade is that it's read only. So you can't actually set anything right here. All you can do is get and get just returns the string grade. Of course, we have our constructor and we also have this determine grade method right here, which takes values from int score one and int score two, and then sets the value of string grade based on uh, how those scores stack up against these values right here. It's essentially taking, um, you know, each of these scores is out of 100 and they're weighted the same. So it's just seeing uh, if this out of these two scores, the student has an A, B, C, D, or F grade right there, and it sets it to the variable. I got to say, personally, I don't like this string grade variable like this. I, I would completely get rid of it and make determine grade a function that returns this string. That's how I would personally define it. but it we're doing it this way specifically for the um we're doing it this way specifically for the example of grade being a read only property like this which is going to make more sense when i talk about the concept for this video but that's what this class looks like and then here is our button display underscore click procedure that takes in you know, the uh, two grades are taken in from these list boxes here. It interprets those grades. It sets them into the score one and score two properties of our student grade object, which we initialize using the default constructor. Um, and then it sets the value of uh, the grade property, or sorry, the um, string grade underlying variable by using the determine grade sub procedure, which returns nothing. Like I said, I'm not a huge fan of how this is implemented, but ha having to like actually manually say, determine the grade and then manually also retrieve the grade. My personal feeling is that it should be only one step for anyone working with this object, but there are ways of implementing that that I'm not going to get into right now. However, the grade is determined using the determined grade method and then uh, they access the grade read-only property and stick that in the um, text property of label grade like that. So that's how that goes. Now, sometimes you have properties that have a very default get and set behavior, sort of like score one and score two that I showed 
that I showed before, where all they are doing is just returning the value of the variable and setting the variable to the value that you are giving it without any modification, any checking whatsoever. It's just very, very default like that. Um, and instead of having to write all of that out and declare the variable yourself and all that kind of stuff, Visual Basic actually allows you to um, use what's known as the auto-implemented property, which allows you to specify a property of a class in one line of code. It creates a hidden associated private variable that you're able to still use within your class, but that might as well not exist outside of your class anyway, so no one really needs to know what that private variable is. And it uses that default get and set behavior that I've really kind of been talking about. Now, this auto-implemented property, you know, you, you can auto-implement read-only or write-only properties for whatever reason. There's only, you're only allowed to auto-implement um, properties that have both a get and set behavior that's very default. Um, so you can only auto-implement your properties that uh, someone who's working with your class's objects can read from and write into. So the syntax for creating an auto-implemented property is I would type public property property name as data type, just like that. Um, and if that is the only line right there, it essentially creates that property name called property name, but then it also creates a hidden variable, a hidden private variable that is the, the actual member variable associated with that property, and the hidden variable will be underscore property name. So it prepends an underscore before your property name. So you'll see property name as the actual property, but then within your class, you can refer to underscore property name to actually talk about the private variable within. So this one line of code, public property property name as data type, is actually completely equivalent to if you wrote all of this code below the blue line I have right here. So declaring your private variable with private underscore property name as data type, and then declaring your public property um, with the get and set stuff with that very default behavior. So as long as all you want to do for the get is just return underscore property name, and all you want to do for the set is just uh, put value inside of underscore property name. These two are equivalent right here. And you can put just this top line, public property, property name as data type. That would just be the equivalent of typing everything else below it. No more, no less. They're just both pretty much the same, but one makes you type a lot less. All right, so here is the course grade uh, class that I showed off before, but now I'm using public properties for score one and score two. Note that string grade um, and the grade property are unchanged, specifically because grade is a read-only property, so I can't actually uh, automatically do the property in the same way that I could with, um, you know, score one and score two. You can only automatically, you know, auto implement properties that are, you know, you can get and set. And that's just by design of how Visual Basic was created. You're not allowed to um, auto implement read only and write only properties, which is a bit of a shame in my opinion, uh, but whatever. So. Regardless, you'll see there's a lot less text in this file because there's no um, full property description for score one and score two. What you might also notice is that now we're using underscore score one and underscore score two as our member variable names for score one and score two. Uh, before it was int score one and int score two, but now we have underscore score one and underscore score two. That's simply a byproduct of auto implementing the uh, property right here. That's just how Visual Basic automatically creates these um, auto-implemented private member variables. But these are still private member variables. They're just kind of invisible. Uh, you could even say just uh, private um, 
score one, score two as as integer as like a comment if you really want to remember that score one and score two are member variables associated with these properties or you can put a comment that says um, associated with score one member variable or something like that if you really want to remember but yeah now we're using underscore score one and underscore score two wherever we are actually using the member variables themselves rather than using the um, score one and score two properties. Uh, if you wanted to, you could still use the score one and score two properties, but uh, we don't really have a need to in any of these use cases since we're not directly putting user input into the properties through these um, any of these methods like we kind of saw before with the parameterized constructor. But yeah. Uh, that just saves us a lot of typing when we have these auto-implemented properties like that. And the cool thing about the auto-implemented properties is that, you know, no one is any the wiser outside of the class because score one and score two are still like the exact same property names and the user isn't allowed to work with the member variables associated with score one and score two. The behavior is exactly the same. We just auto-implemented it so visual, uh, basic kind of wrote that behavior for us instead of us having to write it out by ourselves. So nothing changes for the user. It only makes it easier for us when we are using that sort of default behavior. So that's really, really helpful. Now, of course, um, we can't use these auto implemented properties if our get and our set um, sort of blocks inside of the property, if, if those are anything more compl complicated than just returning and setting a variable directly into, or setting a value directly into a variable. If it gets more complicated than th that, for example, if we are checking to make sure the value is valid, then we can't auto implement the property either. So for our rectangle class, we couldn't auto implement length and width uh, because of the get, or uh, because of the set, um, blocks inside of those properties. So keep that in mind. But when it's just real simple uh, getting and setting going on, and when your property is not read-only or it's not write-only, then yeah, you can just auto-implement auto -implement it just like that, and it's super easy. All right, well, that is auto-implemented auto properties. It's just a quick and easy thing for you to use in order, in order to save time when you're actually writing your um, classes up when you're actually defining those properties. You don't have to type up so much repeated sort of boilerplate text. You can just auto implement the property and be on your way and then save all that time for when you actually need to fully write something out. Uh, actually have get and set things for your properties that are complicated and have some sort of protective sort of uh, purpose for your member variables, or when you actually have to write out the properties for your read-only and write-only properties. So yeah, auto-implemented stuff that just saves you some time.